Alright, g'day guys. Welcome tonight to a new product that I've been playing around with, and uh, that product is called Arkenforge. It's a, uh, a relatively new product to hit the market. Uh, it's drawing a lot of attention, and it's got a, quite a, uh, a bit of a fan base that's starting to grow around it. Um, but everywhere I go, I see people sort of asking, what is it? You know, is it is it Roll20? Is it Fantasy Grounds? Is this going to be a VTT replacement? Uh, is it a map maker? Is it Serenscape? Like, what what is this tool, and what is, is it going to do for my my table? So, I thought I'd try and answer that today. So, Arkham Forge is not Fantasy Grounds. It's not Roll Twenty. It's not trying to be. At least, it wasn't initially trying to be a virtual tabletop in the the sense of something that you would use to play online. So. Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, they're the, the most common names. Uh, D20 Pro is another really good one, or Map Tools. They're software tools that people use to play role-playing games or tabletop role-playing games over the internet. They enable your players to connect into a, a single environment and it replicates the table and you can roll your dice and display your maps and share information and chat and all that sort of stuff. That's not what Arkham Forge was initially designed to be. Ark and Forge realized that there was a market for people who were playing digitally at the physical table. So, like myself, for example, I have never played, actually, nicely, I have played, but I don't play via the internet. Um, I play over a physical table. My, my friends will come around my house and we roll dice that way. Um, but we, we, we migrated from, you know, the old scribbling on a, a piece of paper, drawing the maps down to building physical maps that took horrendous amounts of time to prep and uh, were quite disruptive to the gameplay to eventually settling on, we're going to use a digital map, but we're going to play in person. So personally, I've got a projector um, hanging from my roof, pointed into a mirror that puts the map onto the table. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are utilizing um, TVs, just laying them on their back. And then there's people that are going to the next extent and actually building TVs into polished wood stained tables. And, you know, that's that's the dream and that's where I'd eventually like to personally be. So Ark and Forge is initially designed for that crowd. OK, it doesn't have online functionality. All right, so you can't use Ark and Forge and have someone from the other side of the world connect, not natively. Um, you could use other software to make it make it work, um, but you know its its native function is to basically have a laptop, plug it into a TV screen or a projector, um, and you will use the the Ark and Forge Masters Toolkit on your laptop screen, and from there you'll be able to control things like the map, you know, what fog of war you're displaying. You'll be able to see out to control soundscapes. So you can play sounds, you can play music. Um, and, you know, they've got a massive big thing, uh, run of things that they want to do in the future. And it all looks very promising. It's got a very active developer team standing behind it. Um, they are in Australia. So if you're in America wondering why these guys aren't responding to the questions, it's probably because they are asleep. Um, but incredibly active i mean i've had to basically mute the discord server because it's just popping 24 7 with people asking questions and the developers coming in and giving like instant live support so it's absolutely got a fantastic team behind it um and it's coming together really quickly these guys are pumping out updates you know all the time um and i think this has got a really positive future behind it where it goes in the future not really sure. I'm, I'm reading that, you know, they are looking at putting in like uh, token support and things like that. So maybe down the track, there'll be more functionality that will make it more suitable for online VTT play. But right now, it's designed for your, your in-person, your physical um, play with the VT benefits. So with that said, let's jump over and let's have a look at the tool. We'll show you what it's got to offer in its current state. Um, and, you know, you can make a decision for yourself and whether or not you think this could bring something to your table because I've had a bit of a play um, and oh, I think it's fantastic so far. So let's jump over and have a look. All right, so in front of me, you can see I've loaded up the Master's Toolkit, which is the primary toolkit um, that's available right now. Um, and basically, this is the thing that you need if you want to make maps or if you want to control your sounds and, and play at the actual table. So. What we're going to do first off is we're going to jump in and have a look at the Soundscape module. Uh, for anyone who's used Serenscape, similar concept, um, but these guys don't have an annual subscription. Um, and from what I read, I don't think they're ever going to. Um, 
and you know you can add your own sounds which is just fantastic so if we can click onto this button here when come into soundscapes you can see I've got the essentials pack loaded up and when I click on that I get a couple of different options so uh, we might come into a, a bit of a tavern uh, we want a busy tavern um, and we're going to basically I've got this mute at the moment but we're gonna slowly turn this up hopefully that's not too loud for you then we'll turn the ambience up all right and then you can see over here we've got the FX module as well so we can turn the music off just for the, the ambience all right and it gives a real sort of sense of actually being inside a, a busy tavern which is fantastic the music just adds something extra to it all right but then on top of that as you're playing your game you can really sort of play around with some of the sounds you can throw in some sound effects it's going to really sort of bring your games to life you know let's say there's a tavern fire there's glasses clinging there's things getting smashed it's fantastic you can also add your own sounds all right so if you don't like the sounds here or say you've purchased sounds from elsewhere you can throw them into here and you can bring these to your game and really sort of bring your game alive now as someone who's had a fair bit of experience with trying to play sounds at the table i will give a word of advice uh, don't have it up too loud um, my players did not enjoy being disrupted by the sound it needs to be something that's in the background that enhances it but does not take over the essence of the actual game itself so just keep that in mind so we're going to turn it down a bit low now we'll, we'll leave it going in the background um, before we go we might throw it into a nice sort of nighttime camp scene just so we get some relaxing sounds in the background fantastic so we can now leave this sound playing all right and we can go back to our main menu and it keeps playing which is absolutely brilliant and what we now need is we've got the sound going so we need to have some sort of uh, map to play on and what i've done is i've come in here and i've loaded in a map that i've made using campaign cartographer 3 plus um, for me that is my my map making tool of choice and anyone who follows me will know that already um, but this tool is a lot easier for making maps this has got an entry level that is far less complex than cc3 plus um, it's not as advanced as CC3 Plus, obviously, um, but I would say it's basically attended at a different sort of audience. Um, this Arkham Forge is basically designed for people who want to throw down a map very quickly, bring something together that you know is good for your players to play on, and it's going to get the job done. I'm I use CC3 Plus to make maps that I'm going to sell. All right, they're they're more suitable for going in PDFs and that sort of thing, um, and I. I get a good sense of enjoyment out of making them to that quality so at least trying to so but anyway regardless that's one of the pros of the tool right you can utilize this tool to make your own maps which is absolutely fantastic or you can bring in a map that you've created from elsewhere and you can apply different effects okay so I've got the map um, and what I want to do is and this is this is a fantastic part about this tool is I want to bring in some fire and I, I love this uh, we've got some different fires down here um, we're going to bring in a uh, bit of a fire there and like I, I, I'm speechless how cool is that I've got animated fire on top of my map and it was as hard as that I'm going to add in some smoke all right and that just instantly brings my map to life without having to do anything extra um, we're going to add in a bit of a sparkle and then we've got some decay here this would probably look good all right and that just instantly gives a sense of danger about that section of my map I can't yeah, this is this is next level this is where map making is probably going in the future um, and I think these guys are right on the clubs of making this happen ahead of its time um, they're working with um, some, some animated guys like dynamic dungeons for example they're working with those guys uh, bringing in their animated maps and selling them as packs that you can do so you can bring in fully animated maps you know with swaying trees and rivers that run and all that sort of stuff um, or you can come in here and you can add your, your own maps and bring in some of these animated smart sprites. So fingers crossed they continue to add these in the future. 
Now, you're not just restricted to these things, of course, is there is different uh, elements that you can bring in. So I can bring in a corpse, for example. I'm just going to turn that one. So you can turn these things as well. The rotate button is there. All right, so you can just see I can I can very easily manipulate everything that's on my map, um, and, and sort of bring a bit of extra life to it. So you could just download maps off the internet, for example, and quite easily bring them to life using this. I'll put a little bit of a quest objective there, okay. And then uh, let's say that our quest objective is. Something like that. I wonder if I can give that a bit of a animation as well. Well, there we go. That's way better. Oh, come on, now I get you out of the way. Oh, I'm just going to go backwards with the Control Z and bring that in there. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love it. Um, now, of course, we're going to need to display these to the players. So once you've made your map, um, you basically come in and you press the button to go back home. <coughs> Sorry, just sneezing over here. Uh, we go back to the main screen here um, and we can come into the scenario settings. Scenario settings is where we basically control our game. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on the uh, the ability to see my second monitor, so you can see that down here. This monitor is uh, is being shared with the players, uh, the one in the bottom left, while I've got control of everything else here with my main screen. So, in a real world situation, that black section down the bottom left would be uh, output to my projector onto my table. Now, of course, I can't actually see it on my screen. It's just a, a visual effect for you guys. But using this, I can uh, start to control uh, my music from here. I can control my ambience. Um, my players are coming in and I can play some sound effects, which is fantastic. All right. And then what we can do is uh, start to play around with what the players are actually seeing. So I can see just the edge there because I've got the things thing. All right, so I've actually got the map sort of hidden at the moment, so the players can't see it. And using this fog of war, using the eraser, um, what we can start to do is get rid of some of this. So my players could start with uh, visibility to the outside, and I can quite easily make that visible. And as you can see, it's it's quick and easy to do. Um, you know, and as they progress in, I can just quickly uh, reduce the size of my my thing here um, and give them full visibility of the cave. And how easy was that? And they get full visibility and full access, obviously, to see this. So I'll just sort of bring this up for you there. You know, that's a really good effect for the players. And from this screen, you can tell your story, you can play your music, you can control your map. Um, and you know, <laughs> there's little things like this, right? So it becomes night time. It's got a full day and night slider. And I, I, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think this is a really cool tool. I think it's early days. Like it's, it's in alpha and I think it's just about to hit beta. Um, so it's a great time to, to jump on board because um, there's a lot of updates coming. There's, there's talks of doing campaign management or all that sort of stuff. And obviously any of my user, usual followers will know that's something I'm very passionate about. So I'm very keen to see what they bring to the table in regards to the other things this option, uh, this tool offers. Um, but one of the big benefits that I'm seeing so far is the community that's getting behind this tool. People are sharing packs of assets to create maps with. They're sharing maps that they're creating. Um, and they're really getting behind the, the community spirit of this program, which is always something I look for when I, I decide to go out and try a tool because it's always good to have people using the tool behind you um, because it means together you can do more with the tool. So anyway, this has just been a, a brief sort of overview of Ark and Forge, the Master's Toolkit. Um, 
it you know right now it's absolutely perfectly usable it's a great fun, great tool for running um, games at your table um, as I said earlier you could use it online if you were to use some funky screen sharing stuff and uh, basically um, you know share your screen over the internet to other players so it would be possible um, but it's not designed right now for online play um, you'd probably be better off if you are looking at online and you know you roll 20s or you found Instagrams grounds in my my opinion because it's going to come with all the functionality you need to do all of this plus more you know keeping in mind that you need to share dice and chat and all that sort of stuff but this could certainly go in some very interesting directions in the future but Anyway, guys, this has been uh, just a brief overview of what the Ark and Forge Masters Toolkit is. I hope that's useful for you to, for you guys. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. Um, and if there's any content or tips and hints that you'd like to see in the future, please do let me know. Um, apart from that, guys, uh, it's been fantastic, and I will speak to you on the forums.